Welcome to Fast Click Massive Tutorial. This video will cover the output section and I will be providing you with basic knowledge and examples if necessary. This section has modules at the end of the signal chain, mostly based on the amplitude of the output signal. If you look at the routing page, this displays the signal flow. You can see that the signal flows through the amp section to the Master FX1, then Master FX2, then the EQ, then the Master Volume. The bypass signal varies in the signal chain depending on how the routing page is configured. Here are the briefs of each output modules. This allows you to control the stereo panning and amplitude of the output signal. It consists of a pan control and a modulation slot and a sidechain. You can create different kinds of volume and auto pan related effects. By default the fourth envelope is assigned to control the overall amplitude of the signal before passing through the master volume control. However you can assign any type of modulation source to configure the overall amplitude of your signal. Note that there is no amp control in the amp section because there is already a master volume control. This section allows you to direct the output of the three modulators. There are many reasons for this to be used. For example, you may want a dominant synth or a sub bass that you want to mix with the output signal without the specific signal going through all the other processing of the other modules of this plugin. This consists of one fader that adjusts bypass signal level. By default, oscillator 3 is the bypass signal. However, you can choose from the oscillators and the noise section to be bypassed by selecting the button labelled B. Once selected, the button will be highlighted. You can choose the point at which the bypass mixes with the main signal through the routing page by clicking on the small arrows in the bottom right corner. This section allows you to add the main effects on the overall signal before it is passed on to the EQ and the master volume. You can also bypass these by just using the mute switches. The visible controls are dependent on which effect is selected. Some effects are selectable in stereo or mono. These are labelled in the pop-up menu above. The only control that is in every effect is the dry and wet control which allows you to control between the unprocessed and processed signal. Let's move on to the effect types. This allows you to affect the spaciousness of the sound. These both use the same reverb algorithm. However, the parameters are mapped in different ranges. This lets you control the parameters of the reverb space using three different controls. The size control allows you to configure the length of reverberation, or in simple terms, the room size. Turning it to the left creates a smaller room and vice versa. The density control allows you to control the diffusion of reverberation. In simple terms, turning it to the left will give a lower density, meaning more echoes. Turning it to the right will have a higher density. Color control acts like a filter and subtly changes the sound of reverberation. Turning it to the left will sound duller and to the right it will sound brighter. This processes the signal to be slightly delayed while varying the delay time. This signal is then mixed with the original signal. It creates a spacey underwater quality to the input signals. The rate control configures the speed of delay time change. Turning it to the left becomes slower and to the right will be faster.
The feedback control adjusts the amount of delayed signal routed back to the input. Turning it to the left will be less and vice versa. The depth control controls the amount of delay time variation. Of course turning it to the left will have less variation and to the right there will be more. The stereo version of this effect uses a phase inverted modulation signal for left and right imaging. You will also notice that this effect has positive and negative feedback. This means that the output signal returning to the input is out of phase so that the amplifier gain is reduced and output is improved. This means that the output signal is in phase so that the amplifier gain is increased and resulting with a distorted output. This allows you to affect the signal so that it sounds as if it was created by a choir, having each voice pitched slightly differently. This effect is achieved by delaying the signal and constantly modulating the delay time. The rate control allows you to adjust the modulation speed. The offset control allows you to adjust the delay time. The depth control allows you to adjust the amount of delay time modulation. The stereo version uses phase inverted modulation signals like flanger. This effect uses four different modulation signals, which gives a bright and smooth chorus effect. This allows you to create similar phase sounds as with analog gear. This is achieved by routing the signal through several all-pass filters with modulated frequencies. This changes the phase signal, however the results depend on the signal and filter's frequency when mixed with the original output signal. The phase changes create interesting interference patterns. The rate control controls the speed of the all-pass frequency modulation. The feedback control adjusts the amount of feedback. The higher the feedback, the phase effect will have more intensity. The depth control adjusts the all pass frequency modulation amount. This effect creates a very versatile echo effect. Delay Simple is a stereo delay and it is useful for subtle delay effects without losing rhythmic quality. And Delay Synced is a tempo synced delay. The Dam Control acts as a low pass filter cutoff on the delayed signal.
For simple delay, there are left and right controls that adjust the delay time. The delay sync has an additional control of the feedback and has a ratio control to adjust the speed of synchronized delayed signals. This is a combination of delay and chorus effect. It creates a very clear room-styled spatial effect. This only consists of a size control, which adjusts the spaciousness. This simulates the signal running through a tube amp, which creates a warmer or dirtier sound. This only consists of a drive control, which adjusts the amount of input amplification for the amount of distortion in the output signal. This works in a similar way to Classic Tube, only this is a bit more softer and uses more CPU than the Classic Tube. This is a brighter sounding tube amp simulator. This is an output equaliser that allows you to adjust the low and high shelf as well as the peak frequency and peak boost. When all the controls are centred, you can see the equaliser as a flat line. To summarise things, you can use the spatial effects to give more air to the sound. You can fatten the sound by using chorus or flanger or phaser effects and distort or making sounds dirtier by using various tube amp simulators. This is the most simplest section of Massive. It has one single control that adjusts the output signal overall. This ends my tutorial. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel.